Hey, I'm Galen from Local Creative Co. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about one of my all-time favorite client management tools that I use every single day in my business, and that is HoneyBook. We're specifically going to be looking at how to create a contact form inside of HoneyBook and how to actually add that contact form to your website. So that way, every new potential client who finds your business and fills out your contact form will be automatically put inside of your client management system. Now, whether you're new in business or you've been in business for a long time, putting in place a client management tool like HoneyBook can make a massive difference to your efficiency, your productivity, and just how well you stay organized in general. If you have run a business without a client management system, you know how tricky it is when all of those new inquiries get lost in your inbox among all the newsletters and other subscriptions that you have. It is hard to keep track of who you've already followed up with, who you still need to check on, and where they are in your process. When I have all of my contacts and projects stored inside of HoneyBook, I still get emails in my email inbox, but if I wanna see exactly where each and every client or potential client is in my process, I can log into HoneyBook and get a really clear idea of what I need to do each and every day to stay on top of those projects. If you're a service-based business and you haven't tried HoneyBook yet, I'm going to include a link below this video so you can get 50% off your first year. That makes it about $4.50 a month with that discount, which is a no-brainer. It's less than a fancy cup of coffee. So if you want to go ahead, pause this video, scroll down, click that link, Create your account and come on back. I'll be here waiting for you. Okay, so now why should you actually use a HoneyBook contact form versus the default contact form that comes on your website? Squarespace and Showit both have out of the box contact forms that you can create and use on your website template. And I'm going to recommend that you use HoneyBook instead, not only because it, again, automatically filters people into your client management system, but also because it allows you to track leads so much better, see where people are coming from, and you can design it to match the look and feel of your website. Let's head over to my laptop and I'll show you how to get started. Once you're logged into your HoneyBook account, you're going to hover over tools and see the option here under lead capture for contact form. When I open up the contact form here, you're gonna see it's your default contact form, and I am able to make changes to the fields here. I can change the field names if I want to, and some of these fields actually link to fields on the project itself. So for example, project date, when the client fills this out, it is going to link to the project date inside of the HoneyBook project. Same thing for what type of project are you looking for? I can link this to my project type field. And that way I can have somebody choose exactly what they're looking for. And I can actually set up automations later on based on what they choose here. So say again, I'm a web designer. If I have a few different types of web design projects, maybe I have a branding project option, a website project option, and then a website and branding combo package. I could ask them what they're interested in here. And then based off their selections here, I can send them different emails going forward with the automations feature inside of HoneyBook, which is so, so powerful. Again, another wonderful reason to use HoneyBook contact forms. You can also have a how to do hear about us. Again, this is automatically linked to the lead source field. So you can track where people are coming from and see all your inquiries in one place. Whereas if you're using the default form on something like Squarespace and show it, although you could collect that information, it's just going to get lost in your inbox and you don't get that high level view of where all of your clients are coming from. So that way, at the end of a year, for example, you could look back and say, wow, almost all my clients came from Instagram or a bunch of them came from my blog or my website. It's so, so powerful to have this information to look back on in the future. Then you could have a, um, this is just like a general, tell me about this project. So you could, again, you can go ahead. I'm going to delete some of these fields for this example. So I'm going to delete the uh, address field here. I am going to delete the project date field because I don't want people to choose that right from their contact form. I do want to get their full name, their email, their phone number, but I actually want to update the uh, options here. And so you can't update this here because again, it's linked to your main HoneyBook account settings, but I can update this list in my account settings and it's going to pop up here. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of these options. And I'm going to change these to be a website design and then website, uh, or I'm just going to call branding. 
And then I'm going to have one option that's website design and branding. And then I'm going to also delete the strategy option here. Now I have these three different project types and HoneyBook has a default that is other. I can save changes. And now when somebody goes to select an option here, they are going to see these three options and I can sort all of my new inquiries by this. You also might want to change the how did you hear about us field. I'm going to leave this for now because um, this form is looking pretty good. I'm going to publish these changes just to make sure they're saved. And then I'm going to go into the design settings here on the left hand side. This allows us to change the color. So say I wanted to change the button color to match the colors of my website, the text color. I can also change fonts. You're a little bit limited by what fonts you can choose, but they have quite a few good ones here. So I'm going to choose the font that I use for my website. You can see that updates automatically here. Uh, and all in all, this is starting to look really nice. Again, I'm going to embed this on a page on my website. So I don't need to design the full page, right? I don't need to add anything fancy to this because it's just going to live within the existing design of my website. So I'll publish the changes here. I can preview the form if I want to. I see here it's looking pretty good. I'm going to exit this preview and now we are ready to publish this form on your website. HoneyBook gives us this nice little code here. Uh, as you can see, I just hit publish and then I'm going to copy this code and now I am going to go over to my website and show you two different websites or how you're going to add it to two different types of websites. One is Squarespace and the other is Show It. Let's dive in to Squarespace first. So I make sure my code is copied. I am going to move that HoneyBook tab out of the way and open up my Squarespace site. I'm just in a demo site here. I'm going to click edit on the page that I want to add this form to. This is just a uh, contact page and this is a default Squarespace contact template. And so as you can see, there is already a form block here. And while this is customizable, it's not going to actually do anything with those inquiries. It can import them into a Google, uh, Google spreadsheet, or it can just send it to you via an email or both, but that's about it. So we're just going to delete this default form. Let's remove that block. And then over here, I am going to add a code block. And this isn't going to be available on all Squarespace plans. I believe you have to be on the professional plan or above to get access to the code block within Squarespace. So I'm just going to paste in that HoneyBook code that I copied from HoneyBook. I am going to drag this over here to just create that little spacer effect that we already had. As you can see, this is nice and wide here. It's looking pretty good. The script is disabled, but that's okay. When I hit save, and then we preview this page, you're going to see that my HoneyBook form has now been populated. It fits really nicely into any Squarespace design, and I could have it match my font if I want to, as long as that font exists within HoneyBooks. It's a little bit of a limitation there, but in general, it's going to look really nice, and it's going to make it so that anybody who visits your Squarespace site, they're not even going to know they're filling out a HoneyBook form. They don't ever have to leave your website but they're going to have all the benefits or you're going to have all the benefits of tracking that data and being able to manage your clients outside of your email inbox if you want to. With Show It, we're gonna have to be really careful that the desktop and mobile version of your site look good with that form because both versions of your site are designed completely separately. That allows for so much flexibility, but it can also be a little frustrating because you have to basically design your web page twice. So here's what I'm going to do inside of this show it demo page that I have created for you. I'm going to come down here to this little icon in the middle here, and I'm going to choose embed code. Now, this is really similar to the code block inside of Squarespace. I'm going to drag it out a little bit here, drag it down a little bit to make sure that it fits the space nicely. And then I'm going to open that code block by double clicking paste in that same code that we put into Squarespace, that same code from HoneyBook, hit save. And as you can see, my form is already showing here. It looks a little funky here, but that's because you always want to hit this preview button to preview your site rather than just relying on what you see in the editor. So if I hit preview here, it's going to pull up my site and I can see that over on the left here, my HoneyBook form is looking pretty good. Everything is looking about how I set it up, and I like the look of this. Now, if I go to mobile here on the bottom and preview the mobile version of this page, 
You can see it looks pretty ridiculous, right? The form is now covering some of the content at the top of the page and it just doesn't look good. So we're gonna have to actually design the mobile version of this page. So I'm going to click on this show mobile version of the site down here at the bottom. We were on the desktop version. We're going to go to the mobile version. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and I'm actually just gonna drag this down, this contact form down and make sure that it is not covering any of my content at the top of the page here. And then over on the right, I have the option to center this object on my canvas just to make sure it's nice and centered on the page. That looks pretty good. I am now going to preview the mobile version of this page. And there we go. There is my contact form. Everything looks pretty good. Nothing is getting cut off here. If I noticed that the bottom of the form was getting cut off, I would come back to the page here and just drag this section down a little bit to give it a tiny bit more breathing room at the bottom. So this looks good. Again, I'm gonna preview it just to make sure it looks good on both desktop and mobile. Here's the desktop version, looks pretty good. Here is the mobile version, also looks good, nothing getting cut off, and uh, everything looks how I want it to. So that's pretty much it. Now you have your HoneyBook form on your website. This should replace whatever other contact form you may have been using before. And it's just so wonderful to have all of your inquiries, all of your projects, and all of that communication stored in one place so you can always reference it to see where you're at with different projects. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, let me know in the comments below so I know to make more of these kinds of videos. And also don't miss out on a ton of the free resources linked in the description below.